I'm just here to, you know, get you guys to watch some movies. Uh, <laughs> Well, there, there's plenty of them out there already, and all of them, in anyone's opinion, are important to some degree. I just think, um, and, and you guys may agree, that the, the problem is choosing which ones to watch. You know, my, my friend is telling me to watch this one. The local critic's telling me to watch that one. I can't miss this one because it's going to be the biggest thing ever. I, I mean, I'm kind of wondering who to listen to here. Past the movies I've gotten to know really well, the other releases just get kind of hazy with all the commentary I hear along with it. And I know, even when I'm up here, I'm not really innocent of that, right? Because the right movies for me must be the right movies for you. Uh, it's frustrating that I'm just another guy trying to find a way to uh, tell you what to watch. But bear with me for a second. Uh, I think I might have something kind of interesting for you. I have a special trick, uh, a cheat sheet, if you will. So you can take all those movies and go, oh yeah, that's something I can get. It works for me, and it might work for you. Uh, so what do I do, you ask? Well, I put them into groups. That's something I could really understand. Stuff just comes together really nicely when you can put them together into groups. Uh, movies are no different. And uh, if you don't already have groups that you can fit them under, I got five right here that you can use, because I'm nice. Uh, you already know how to watch the biggest blockbuster out there, you know? You, you circle the big opening day on your calendar. You spend the next month or so getting hyped. You camp out in line for, for two straight nights th for the theater. Uh, and you, you, uh, you, you flip out when you see it, because it's so exciting. Uh, I call these wait-in-line movies, mostly because the experience is all in the anticipation. I mean, the actual watching part can be awesome, like The Dark Knight, or not so awesome, like Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> uh, eventually, you're, as soon as Friday night leaves and Monday morning comes, uh, you're just going to get stuck in English class with your teacher making you watch a film version of Macbeth, because you have to write a paper on it later. It's group two, dragged by your feet movies, and as much as you don't want to drag your little sister to go see another Disney princess movie, you can't really argue with anyone who makes you go watch one. Uh, other times when you're just hanging out with other people, you might hear you know, a phrase or a conversation that you just completely do not understand. Guess what? That's a movie, and you have to watch that movie in order to figure out what everybody else is talking about and look cool. Uh, group three, part of the circle movies, includes everything from I'll give you an offer you can't refuse to always be closing. Uh, there's also that moment when, uh, when someone, either a friend or a random person, walks up to you and tells you that you should watch uh, a movie you've never heard of, but you just have to kind of smile and make believe like you, you, know, you know what they're talking about when they say the cinematography is great. Uh, group, <laughs> group four is the give it a shot movies. Because, I mean, my dinner with Andre was interesting. Um, and finally, at the end of the day, when, when you've just gotten so much stuff on your mind, like tests and projects and sports and, and get-togethers, get, get to uh, uh, you just need something to unload your thoughts with, but something that will un unwind the gears kind of slowly. You watch stuff in group five, late night solo movies, because you just need the chance to sit back and, and ponder. You're still trying to figure out what exactly happened in Inception. So, so all right, you're thinking, here we go, I, I got all these groups and we're good to go. I, I, I can start watching those movies now. But, but wait a second, some of you might be thinking, all right, group one's my favorite, I'll just start watching more wait in line movies. But hold on a second, I, I don't think zoning in on one of these is, is quite what we want. I think we should watch more movies and, and not less, so we shouldn't really choose favorites. Uh, and, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, there's something more to this system th that's more than just groups. Uh, to show that, I I'm going to take us back to group two for a second, the, the group you guys do definitely, definitely do not want to talk about, Dragged by Your Feet movies. Because none of those have ever been really good, right? Well, you know, now that you think about it, there was that one time when you were 10 and, and mom made you go visit grandpa, which was super annoying because uh, you knew grandpa was going to make you watch uh, To Kill a Mockingbird again, a total <laughs> Dragged by Your Feet movie. But, but you know, this time as, as you were watching it, that scene where um, Scout roughs up the boy on the playground, uh, that, that scene kind of reminded you of a week before when you went to go see Pineapple Express with your, when you, with your friend and his older brother. And, and you wanted to laugh, to, to look cool, and get a part of the Circle movie under your belt. But it wouldn't have felt right, because even though you didn't want to really tell them, the jokes made you feel uncomfortable. So something about Scout's character here reminded you about you. So for the first time, you paid attention to Mockingbird all the way to the end. And just like that, when you were only 10, you started liking movies. That's it. 
all these groups are tied together by your life. You don't have to spend any time you know, thinking where these groups come from or, or which to choose from because they've all been there this entire time. You waited two years to go see The Force Awakens because you saw a new hope when you were a kid and you just loved it. You met your best friend when they said you should watch this weird little movie called Rushmore and you guys have been talking about Wes Anderson films ever since. I mean, after a week of, of like stressing out for that big history final, uh, watching 2001 A Space Odyssey just really made your problem seem smaller because you found out the universe is so big. And that's what I'm trying to get at here. Movies have never been about one time, one place, one person. They shouldn't be because you aren't. You're always changing and you've arguably come across every kind of movie there is. You felt anticipation, dread, consolation, uh, relief, gratitude, all through what you've seen in movies because it's where you found out and, and really where you continue to find out that's okay to be seeing a lot of change in your life. Whenever you found out something new about yourself, it's, it's stuck with you and it's helped you to become the person you are today. I like the groups because they help isolate those moments, but it's not really about the groups. It's, it's about the moments. So how does that really tie back into watching the right movies? For you, uh, in particular, I gotta be honest, I have no idea. Um, but, but for me, I, I knew I was watching the right movie when I went to go see Lawrence of Arabia uh, at the Music Box Theater in Chicago. 70 millimeter projection in, in all its glory. Uh, when within the first you know, 10 minutes or so of the movie, I started spacing out. Um, I was like, Tommy, what, you know, what are you doing? You're blowing it. Critics from across the globe have been telling you that this is the last chance you're gonna get. You know, your, your English teacher has, has told you it, it's gonna be the best experience you're ever gonna have, you know, the big screen. And um, I, I just couldn't think about that. Uh, uh, all I could think about was um, tossing pennies into the fountain in front of the, in front of the library at, at, at Shorewood, Wisconsin. And uh, all I could think about was getting mad at my best friend for, um, for saying that we were never gonna see each other again after I'd moved to Lake Bluff, Illinois. And all I could think about was, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, get, getting frustrated myself for never been, being able to say yes to the people who, to the kids at recess who invited me to play kickball with them. And all I could think about was, was how desperately I wanted to just become George Bailey, you know, able to make friends like he, he was in a, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. It, it felt right to, you know, sit down and watch any movie, really. Uh, and then I, I saw myself in, in this theater seven years later, you know, having learned a lot, but you know, pretty much doing the exact same thing. And uh, as, I, as I watched this you know, beautiful wide shot panning across the desert, I, uh, it didn't really feel like I was escaping. It, it felt like I was being brought back. So, you know, I, I smiled because then I knew I was watching the right movie. Thanks.